Today we're going to do a Q&A. We haven't done a Q&A for a long time. And I guess I thought hitting 250,000 subscribers on this channel would be kind of a cool milestone upon which to do one. Because 250,000 subscribers is just mind-bending to me and amazing. So thanks for joining me on this journey. I threw a question box out on Instagram in the old stories and uh, it feels like all of you answered because I have way, way more questions than I can possibly cope with. I think a little bit below a thousand questions, a lot of questions. Choosing what to answer was difficult, but thankfully a lot of you asked the same sort of questions. So we'll, we'll touch on a few of those, make sure those get answered. I will say a bunch of you asked a bunch of kind of um, private life stuff, personal information. I'm, I'm not going to tell you that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to tell you that stuff. I know it's normal for YouTubers to often showcase a lot of their lives, their private lives, their homes, their families, their, you know, you know the behind the scenes stuff. Not me. There's a line for me, and I'm, we're going to keep this side of that line. Though a lot of you wanted to know how tall I was. So I guess that that, I don't know if that counts. I'm six foot four or 193 centimeters in sensible money. Let's get on to some coffee questions. I say that, but actually I'll, I'll answer the, the first question that I got, which also came up a whole bunch of times, which was, uh, how are you? I'm okay. I, I'm no worse than anyone else. Like it's weird time right now for everybody. I am fortunate. I am okay. I'm not terrified about, you know, a roof over my head and food on the table. So from that perspective, I am very grateful. There's a bunch of stuff I'm freaking out about and I'm stressed about and, you know, but that's the sort of, the, the, the basics are solid. So I'm basically, I'm okay. I'm okay. I wish I had more time for this. Do you like tiramisu? What coffee works best in your opinion? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't trust anyone who does not like tiramisu. Tiramisu is the best. I love tiramisu. I love trashy tiramisu. I love fancy tiramisu. I love all of the tiramisus. I want to go deep into making tiramisu. It's been a kind of little slow burning passion project in my spare time. There will be at least one video about tiramisu on this channel. That is an absolute goal for me. I want to go, I want to go big on tiramisu because it's amazing. It's delicious. It's so good. So bad. I like tiramisu a lot. A load of questions from uh, a lot of you about how I started my career in coffee. I should really just make a good full video about that and some of the things that I learned along the way early on. It was part chaos, part opportunity, I, I hope a little bit of hard work, a good amount of luck um, and, and timing in some ways that sort of, you know, I, I was around at the, the beginnings of specialty happening in the UK that, that did present a bunch of opportunities. Though I guess there probably weren't the opportunities around that there are now in the UK, so maybe any time is a good time. But I will try and make a full video about that that kind of covers as much as possible that is useful about my first few years in coffee. A lot of you wanted to know how I feel about tea, specialty tea. I, um, I desperately love good tea. The teas I particularly enjoy are often oolong teas from like the Phoenix Mountains or like Taiwanese oolongs in particular. Those kind of teas are completely delicious. I'm a little spoiled by having postcard teas in London. I love their teas. They're often sourced down to a single tea master, sometimes a single tree. They're just stunning, mind-blowing teas. If you don't know them, go and check them out. You can't visit the shop right now, but when you can, please go. It's great. You'll have a wonderful time. You'll spend a lot of money on tea and you'll be glad you did. So I love tea. I'm scared of learning about another thing. I'm scared of another obsession. I'm scared of going down another rabbit hole. There are limits to the number of things I can obsess over in my life, I think. Favorite cocktail? The Gibson, because martinis are phenomenal, and gin, because I'm not, you know, a heathen, and uh, pickled onions are, are the best. The best. So a, a pickled onion and a martini, who's not having a good time? That said, most of them suck, but when they're made well, it is the perfect cocktail to me. That makes me want to drink. This is covert. This is um, this is, is pretty delicious. It's a uh, orange and fig leaf liqueur from a producer in Cognac that was sent to me because the the producer likes the the channel, which was kind of amazing. I traded back. I'm not a I'm not a taker. I like to you know swap a little bit. So uh, the, yeah, this he he was a big fan of this with espresso. I'm a big fan of this with this. It's not the morning, by the way, when I'm shooting this. This is acceptable. You know what I mean? It's definitely, it's, it's actually nighttime, so I'm not drinking coffee right now. This is okay. 
What sort of videos can we expect in the future? Do you have new ideas waiting to be done? Oh, I have so many ideas. I have a crippling amount of ideas, if I'm honest. I, I, I keep a, a Trello board. I use Trello as an organizational thing to keep my ideas in and then I stack them up into each month and all that kind of stuff. I had a really cool live tasting planned that was gonna be a once in a lifetime opportunity to taste something completely wild. And I hope I get to do that one too. That will be very silly and, and pretty small. It'll be like a, a ticketed event. Probably only 50 people can attend, but what you will taste will be once in a lifetime and ridiculous. What was my first espresso machine? My first espresso machine was a, a refurbed Gaggia Classic because I worked for Gaggia and, and it took me a while to kind of get one, but they, they sold me a refurb. I was just a demonstrator in a department store, so I wasn't important that way. I, but it was nice to get like a good cheap machine. It had a solenoid valve, that was a big deal. Um, little thermal block, it's a classic. It's the Gaggia Classic, but it is a classic, you know, of, of espresso's history, especially in the home. I don't remember how long I had that for. I think I, I, think I got rid of it fairly early on, but um, yeah, it was my first coffee machine. Loads of questions about this. Lots of people wanting me to recommend roasters in the UK outside of Square Mile. And I struggle with this, not because I don't think there are other great roasters, because there are so many other great roasters, but I hate to play favorites. And so I'm gonna pick one which feels better than picking two or five or 10 and therefore feeling like I'm excluding more people. And I'll pick one with a story. James Gourmet Coffee. I'll put a link in the description. Peter James was a hugely inspiring figure to me early in my coffee career. Before Square Mile was a coffee roasting company, we needed to roast coffee to take to the World Roasting Championships in Tokyo in 2007. Peter lent us his roasting space. He helped us out a ton. Um, I'm forever grateful to him. He is an OG of the UK specialty coffee scene. His coffee is always great. He's always been a passionate advocate of excellence and flavor, and he's not a trend-driven roaster. He's just relentlessly excellent. So if you're in the UK, shout out to James Gourmet Coffee. There's a link in the description. I have a huge amount of time for Peter James and, and, and his team and what they do there. So there's a shout out. Who is Jim Seven? What is the connection to James Hoffman? So on my socials, I'm at Jim Seven. Uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, those kind of places. And um, do I regret that? M maybe. So, so years ago I used to make music and I used to make music under the name of Lomax. And then I was about to release my first EP, but then a little band called Lomax released their EP. And I was like, oh no, now I can't be Lomax anymore. And so I needed a name. I'd been working in a casino when I learned to deal Texas Hold'em poker. You get two cards if you play Texas Hold'em. These are your pocket cards. And, and constantly, whenever I was learning, I would always get King Seven as my pocket cards. And I would usually win when I got King Seven. And I just, it was just this little combination that popped up in my head and sort of stuck with me as part of my Texas Hold'em experience and working as a croupier and that kind of time in my life. And it was just a phrase that I thought sounded nice. So I released music as King Seven, like 2003, a long time ago. And then I, I, I needed to register a blog spot in 2004. And so at that time, a lot of people called me Jim. No one calls me Jim anymore, but then they did. So I was like, I'll just be Jim Seven instead of King Seven. So now I'm at Jim Seven. And, and I feel a bit stupid about it sometimes. It's not a good origin story. Weirdest cup you ever drank. There's probably a bigger story I should tell here. I'll give you the, the, the short version. It was picked in 1954 and aged as green coffee for 60 years. It was then roasted fresh and brewed fresh in a massively updosed Nell cloth dripper. It was like 30 grams of coffee to produce what seemed like 60 mils of liquid. And, and upon my first sip, I realized that, that a lot of the human sense of taste is an early warning system letting you know whether what you're eating or drinking might kill you. And my alarms were going off. Like there was something so kind of rotten tasting about this coffee that was clearly safe to drink. It had been 200 and something degrees Celsius. Like anything dangerous was dead. This was just purely unpleasant and weird and fermenty and rotten and just like a lot and super intense, but also super under extracted. And I was with people who paid for it for me and I felt very compelled to finish it while also aggressively trying to share it with them. Uh, to, to get it finished. Um, Cafe Lambre in, in Ginza in Tokyo was the place. It is uh, an incredibly memorable experience. Um, I, I would go back in a heartbeat. I would love to go back and drink coffee there again, 
Probably just wouldn't pick the oldest thing on the menu though. 1954, perhaps a little bit old. Uh, have you ever pictured yourself as a half man, half octopus named Hoftopus? Yes. How to get free coffee from James. Well, it's funny you should ask that question. It turns out that every video right now has a giveaway. Now, if you can afford coffee, maybe don't click the link. Maybe if you can buy a local support a business that you care about, but if you can't afford coffee right now, every video I give away 10 bags to 10 different people anywhere in the world. I'll ship it wherever I can legally ship roasted coffee. Uh, if you need it, if you can't afford it, just enter down below and, and I hope I can help you out a little bit each time. And I can do that because these videos have a sponsor and this video is sponsored by Audible. Now you probably know Audible as the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. For me, audiobooks have two places in my life. For me, I love audiobooks in the kind of dead time. Times like commutes, times like when I'm driving, when I'm occupied but my brain kind of isn't. Those are great times for me to learn something. And recently I've gone back to a classic. I've gone back to David Allen's Getting Things Done. A lot of us struggle with productivity now more so than ever and boundaries and challenges around just the amount of digital work that we have to do, the number of emails filling our inboxes. His systems, his ideas have been hugely helpful for me and going back to that again has been really helpful right now. But I also use audiobooks as a moment of solace, a moment of escapism, a moment of pause in my day. That's where fiction belongs. And recently, I've just really, really been enjoying Ted Chiang's collection of short stories that is exhalation. This is science fiction very broadly. This is really just stories about humans without boundaries. It's a fantastic collection of stories. I recommend it very highly. If you want to trial Audible, go to audible.com slash James Hoffman. Or if you're in North America, you can text James Hoffman to 500 500 for one free audiobook and two free Audible originals. You can trial the service. And even if you use the service for a while and cancel, you get to keep any audiobooks in your library. I'm very grateful to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now this last question came up a lot, like a lot, a lot. And it was, are you doing a brewing method for Aeropress, Clever, Kalita, Melita, Thin Filter, Siphon, uh, Turkish method, like like all of them. And, and ultimately, yes, that is the plan. I wanna do a brewing method guide and ultimate technique for every single brewer that people commonly use. Right now, the world is drowning in brewing guides. Everyone is, is just putting a lot of brewing guides online. For, for me, the kind of ultimate technique-y stuff tends to take a while because there's a bunch of questions around each brewer that I want to answer. With a clever dripper, I want to know why does it choke sometimes. I want to work that out in order to prevent it happening and, and get deeper into it. I don't want a method that works most of the time. I want to try and produce something that works as often as possible. So it means getting deeper into it, getting a bit nerdier. So yes, they're just going to take a while. And I'm sorry, I wish I had more time to do them. They are incredibly time consuming. They often drag multiple people in to help me with testing and that kind of stuff. So yes, I'm working on it. I want to do it. I just don't have a time frame for you because I've set myself this ridiculous expectation of quality and value and information and, and all of that sort of stuff. So just give me a little while. I'm working on it. If I had to pick one next, it's either going to be the Clever or the Aeropress, I think. I'm working on both a little bit right now. Anyway, that's it. That's the Q&A. Thank you for all of your support. It's amazing. 250,000 subscribers is something I didn't think I would really ever hit. So the fact that it, I, we kind of blew through it way quicker than I expected. I think at last time I looked, I was at 257, and I feel like I just asked this question three days ago, so I don't know what's happening right now. Apparently lots of you find me drinking instant coffee a good video. It better not be my most viewed video, but I feel like it's going to be. It will. Anyway, for now, wrap up. We'll do a future Q&A again. I'll work on a live stream. I know lots of you asked for that, so that's, that's in the works. It's just a little tricky right now, but I'll say thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.